Legion of Superheroes issue 9 sees the trial of the Legion get underway, with the Legion assembling for the President of the United Planets, who says each member of the Legion was approached to join based on their unique skill set and legacy with each interaction recorded, and she wishes to show portions of the auditions that pertain to the accusations brought before them. She begins with Dawnstar's file, showcasing the hero meeting Imra and Rock, who saw her take down the Red Horaz and that's why they ask her to join the Legion. Dawnstar asks if they are fighting for the United Planets or against them, and Imra reveals alongside, making the winged hero decline the offer, despite learning that they won't report to the President. Imra says that they will make their own rules and have complete autonomy from the United Planets, wanting warriors like Dawnstar to push for that autonomy. Dawnstar agrees to join as the President calls up Bouncing Boy's file, which shows the Legion meeting with Charles, who tells them to call him Bouncing Boy, despite the Legion all thinking they should call him the Bullet. Charles Paul says that it's all about the bounce with him, showing why he's classed as a level 8 metahuman as he bounces around the room, revealing he's invulnerable and can reach high velocities the more he bounces. The Legion want to change his name to Battle Bull, but Charles insists on being called Bouncing Boy, as the trio learn that the man is even a doctor as well as a hero. Rock mentions how even they don't like the United Planets, just like Charles, who is interested since the Legion is being formed to fix that. Monster Boy file is called up and Arun reveals to the trio that he's different from the change morph the Legion already have on call, revealing just how big he can get, transforming into a giant space whale bat creature which flies the trio around the city, with Rock commenting that he would like to see the President try and stop them now. The President wants to know what Rock meant by that since those are words of rebellion and revolt. Shadowlust cuts her off, saying that those are just cherry picked selections and she too has her own selections, wanting to show Dream Girl's file, but Block interrupts them, feeling betrayed by his former employer, saying that he gave the president everything. Brainiac calms the stone being down as Wildfire takes the stage, wanting his audition to be played. Wildfire's audition is played, revealing how he showed off his powers, and how he's not really made of fire, but he's an anti-energy release generator. Rock says the being has made the cut, but Wildfire says he's not there for an audition, he's there to find out if this is all for real since a lot of people do a lot of talking, and he's sick of talking, since they need to do something or the galaxy will crack in two. Wildfire says that he's just made of energy and what they put out is all that matters in the end. Drake thinks the United Planets is the greatest thing to ever happen and he will gladly lay down his energy for it, and for the president, but it's got to be the real deal. Shadow Lass then releases Timberwolf's file, which shows the trio being taken to his planet, showing that nothing can grow there anymore thanks to the death of his homeworld. He reveals that he was experimented on as a child, turned into a warrior to defend the homeworld, but by the time his experiments finished, the world had already burned and this was what happens when there is no one to help creatures who need it. He reveals he brought the heroes to his homeworld to see, smell and taste what he's fighting for, and wants them to see how important a united planet is and how important their fight is. The team invite him to the Legion as the invisible kid speaks up from some somewhere in the courtroom, saying that he joined the Legion because his planet exists on a different part of the visual spectrum to theirs, and it's sometimes difficult for him to find a way to interact with others. He knows not many remember him since no one can see him, remembering one of Rose Forrest's sayings, out of sight, out of mind, saying that he had never heard that saying before, but it makes so much sense to him. The hero says that to say his people are in opposition of the United Planets is madness, since they are an extension of it, and while he doesn't like many of the legionnaires on the team, every one of them is dedicated to the mutual cause and they all caught the general red-handed trying to overpower the worlds in the United Planets. He knows this is all a distraction from the real facts and the general should be standing trial. Suddenly Krav arrives, having captured his son and put him in chains. Krav says that his son betrayed their ways so he has been cast out, ordering all of the other legion members to be sent back to their own homeworlds and each planet to deal with the criminals according to their own customs like he did his son. The Legion says that Krav has no right to do what he did, and the President reminds Krav that his seat on the United Planets has been forfeited and he should have been told that, but the General doesn't care, saying these children destroyed the United Planets and Rimbor will have its seat on the Council return to it once justice has been served. Seconds later, Monel launches himself at Krav, beating him mercilessly as the Legion pull him off the General, with Monel shouting that he is a Kryptonian Prime and could flatten the whole 
place with just a look. Superboy tries to reason with his distant relative, but the hero speeds off. Dream Girl approaches the president, introducing herself, but Crab demands justice. Nura, however, tells the general what she can do, but Crab doesn't trust her future dream predictions. Nura doesn't care, saying that she's seen what's coming, and it's why she stands by his son's side, since she has been dreaming all of this, and as stressful as it is, it's nothing compared to what is coming. She asks the president if she would like to know what is coming, and the president does, but Crab still calls her powers trickery, as Dream Girl reveals a great darkness is coming. The triplicate girls, meanwhile, think that they should all go home to Karg, and the blue triplicate says that they need to stay since the Legion needs them, and Pink agrees, knowing that they are at the capital of the galaxy, and doesn't want to turn back on them because they are on trial. The yellow triplicate says that she wants to just go home and to stop robberies on their homeworld, instead of being on the Legion, since they feel like they are being used, but Pink knows it's more like they are being set up by the President. The siblings wonder what they should do, knowing a decision needs to be made, but Pink thinks they talk to themselves too much, knowing that they need to talk to others and hear everyone out. The Legion begins to argue with one another, with Lightning Lass knowing that they should be out there fighting for the people, not in a courtroom bickering, but Lightning Lad knows that someone has to stand up to these accusations. Gold Lantern knows the President is punishing them for doing their job, and Chameleon Boy tells them his mother won't even show her true face to the Galactic since she's a coward. Colossal Boy wants to go back in and apologize for mon outburst, but Dr. Fate knows that's a terrible idea, as he is summoned into the Great Hall. Dr. Fate enters the hall, learning from the President that she wants to know what the Lords of Order think of this great darkness Dream Girl speaks of. Fate weaves his magic, knowing that while he can't see what Dream Girl sees, he can interpret dreams, which he looks into with the power of Naboo, knowing chaos in the galaxy is indeed growing and there is no balance anymore, and it all began when the Legion was announced, and their concern for the Great Darkness is very real, and the Legion must prepare, and if the Darkness doesn't come, it will be because the Legion was actively working to avoid it, but if it does come, they will be prepared to face it, since they are the Legion of Superheroes. White Witch watches Dr. Fate's speech, knowing that she has spent a century preparing for this, and even she is surprised to find and she knows more about the coming madness than the Lord of Order. Ola, however, harbors a dark secret, that she is the daughter of Mordru, a secret she keeps even from Saturn Girl, and if Mordru is the cause of this darkness, she will reveal the truth, but if he isn't, she will keep her family shame to herself. The hero speaks up, saying the President recruited her herself to the Legion, so she need not speak her spells to the woman. White Witch reveals the true reason the General was seeking the power of Aquaman's trident and still searches for more power is because Rimbor knows the coming darkness is real. Brainiac tries to stop White Witch, but the hero continues, saying Krav continues to attack the United Planets through the Legion, so he can eventually take the government for himself. Krav openly admits to as much, and is shut down by Gold Lantern, who contains him for the President. The President calls the General Chaos Incarnate, and Gold Lantern has the United Planets blessing to get Krav off-world and bring him to ultimate justice, hoping the next leader of Rimbor is more delightful to deal with. The President talks with the Legion, saying that she would like to end this trial, since she brought the brilliant young leaders there to prove the Legion was right and good, and they did, proclaiming long live the Legion. The Legion all leave, and Saturn Girl meets with John, who goes to thank the woman, but she already knows he was going to say that. John is grateful for her bringing him to the future to see all this, but he stops, remembering that she can read his mind. Imra likes that he keeps forgetting, and John hopes that he hasn't offended her, with Imwa wondering if he means with his romantic thoughts he's had towards her since the moment they met. Superboy realizes that she's seen his thoughts, leading to the two heroes kissing. Legion of Superheroes issue 9 continued the really cool artist-centric storyline as the Legion are put on trial for crimes they didn't commit. I love the Legion standing up for themselves across this trial and showing how even despite all of them coming from different planets, dimensions, religions, beliefs, and even some of them not liking each other, they all still come together in the belief that if help is needed, they will be there to help. It's a great way of showing why the Legion is as loved as they are. The art in this installment also outdoes the previous issue in my opinion, with gorgeous pages by Jenny Frizon, Nicholas Scott, Mitch Gerrards, and Gary Frank, among other Others. I'm looking forward to the upcoming new Krypton arc as we enter the final three issues of the book, as well as the development of Superboy and Saturn Girl's budding romance, which we saw a tease of at the end there. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. A 10